Hello everyone and welcome to the screencast for EPQ students. In the screencast I'm going to be looking at the idea of project planning. Well let's get started then. Perhaps the most important thing is to um, think about time management and the EPQ. So throughout the EPQ you want to show evidence that you've looked carefully at time management and at other organizational elements. And I'm going to be showing you in the screencast why that's so important. More specifically, this is what we'll be looking at. What is the planning review? And so we'll be looking at the production log. What's the importance of AO1 assessment criteria? What's a Gantt chart or organizational chart? And I'm going to show you a whole variety of ways in which uh, you have to um, show planning. Do you have to complete a Gantt chart? And what are the alternatives to the Gantt chart? And the deeper question, this is one that you need to consider, is how will I review my project plan as I proceed with the project? How will I show evidence to my supervisor, the coordinator, and the examiner that I've been looking critically at my plan and that I've been thinking about it and evaluating it? Okay, so let's move on. Now, this is very, very important because in uh, the production log, the planning review follows the coordinator approval. So it means that you've now decided what your working title is going to be and that you will now proceed with uh, your plan. And you will show that you're breaking the plan down into more manageable chunks. OK, now many of you are going to feel like this straight away. Coursework has been reduced at GCSE, so increasingly students are not used to project-based work and they're not used to working on their own. And I think the first reaction when you think to yourself, I have this massive project, I don't know very much about the topic, etc., is to feel like this, okay? And I'm reminded, therefore, of the old joke, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you probably wouldn't want to eat an elephant, but if you were to eat an elephant, you would do so one bite at a time. And that's what this screencast is all going to be about. It's going to be about chunking, breaking things down, and putting them into manageable units. Because once you've done this, a giant project such as eating an elephant will not seem quite so daunting. Now, firstly, here is the assessment criteria. AO1 manage, it's called, okay? And you'll see here. Identify project aims and objectives. Produce a project plan. That will be our main focus today. Complete the work applying organizational skills and strategies. As ever with the EPQ, the onus is upon you to show evidence of the work that goes on behind the scenes. And the idea of the production log is to make the invisible work visible for the examiner. Let's not forget the EPQ is a process-based uh, qualification. It's different from coursework. You're not judged solely on the final product. It's all the work that goes on in the background. And so you're tasked with this idea of a detailed project plan with clear evidence of monitoring progress of the project against agreed objectives. So you're going to need to show that not only did you produce this project plan, but that you looked at it often you evaluated it. Now, many students will produce two or three different project plans as uh, their objectives change. Final point from this slide is the clear identification of the topic and clear evidence of appropriate aims and objectives. So you want to show that all the time you've got your eyes on the prize and you know what you're doing. That, though, doesn't mean that you can't make significant changes to the project, okay? So I want you to remember that alongside AO1, you're thinking about AO3. In fact, AO3 is worth double the amount of marks. Alongside this very clear project planning, you want to show problem solving, decision making and creative thinking. And any engineer or person who works in project management will tell you that frequently there are changes to the project. So those changes are a good thing as long as you explain the rationale behind it and why you've changed things like objectives and dates. 
So to get a top marks, to get an A or an A star, the project plan is fully implemented and the outcome is fully realized to a high standard and consistent with the candidate's finally agreed plan. Now, I just want to put the emphasis there on finally. So that means that you don't need to worry because until the mid-project review, you can change the title and you can actually change the outcomes, all right? So bear that in mind. So you want to show both planning, but also that needs to be balanced with flexibility. So I wanted to remind you of that, okay? Now, just moving on. This textbook, the EBQ Toolkit for the AQA, is absolutely excellent. If you have a copy of it, please refer to it. In particular, the early stages of it that deal with project planning and uh, also time management. So that's absolutely excellent. If you need to pick up a copy from me, please come to my office and do so. And inside uh, the, uh, the toolkit textbook, there are some excellent exemplars of ways that you might want to plan. So I'll be dealing with very similar techniques now as we go through this screencast. Okay, so planning techniques. The EPQ um, Examination Board AQA often will show us about Gantt charts, okay? And I will be t talking a little bit about Gantt charts today. And I'm gonna be absolutely open with you because I'm not a scientist or an engineer, I really don't get that. Um, I'll show you how to use just a straight calendar. I'll also talk about a flow chart, I'll talk about a table, and I'll talk about a task list. So, message number one is, you find the way to construct your uh, project plan that suits you. We're all very different learners and we have different ways of organizing ourselves. Firstly, the idea of a Gantt chart, as you can see here, it's a kind of a bar chart and it's done as so that it shows the period that you're going to take. So in this case here, there's the process one, it's going to take January to February, etc. Process three is going to take all the way from March to August. Now I find Gantt charts are most um, successful when people are doing group projects because it may be that one person has to do something first and another person has to pick them up. However, as I said, I must confess I find them very confusing. What I have done here is I've put a link to a very simple explanation of how Gantt charts work. Now if you want to uh, watch that on YouTube, you can. Uh, this is the, the guy who delivers the, uh, the uh, Gantt chart talk. It's uh, online PM courses. Uh, it's five minutes long. So I'm not going to show that now because not everyone is going to use a Gantt chart. So you might choose to use a Gantt chart. Now there's some little alternatives to a Gantt chart. Here is my planning that I use with the EPQ year above you, year 13. And I'm simply using a table of dates. Now... This is, I, as you know, I'm an English teacher, I'm not very scientific or mathematical, and I simply find this way of planning my work easier and better. So this is an alternative to Gantt charts. And task lists can be very useful. So some students enjoy using Excel. And you can break your tasks into high priority, medium priority, and lowest priority or short-term, medium-term, and long-term. You can have some provisional dates, if you like, and you can keep some notes on your progress. So this kind of task list done in Excel would be an excellent way of organizing your EPQ. And that, of course, is a alternative to the Gantt chart that we saw over here. So again, once again, the message is flexibility. Uh, some people like to use flowcharts because it shows processes and how they go. Now, it might be that you use a flowchart for only part of your project and that you're not using it for all of your project. In, uh, further into the screencast, I'll show you a flowchart that I've created for my own planning once again. So I find them useful because they're much more visual. Um, and they show how one process leads to another and how perhaps one large process has smaller processes attached to it. So that's another useful 
tool for thinking about evidencing planning. Um, this is a piece of software called Roshare. I haven't used it myself, but once again, it gives you another alternative. You can use this, you put your item in that you are on in your project, you say who's going to do it. So if you're doing a single project, that will be you. Of course, if you're doing a group project, having a kind of group uh, software could be very useful indeed. Now, I like the idea that you have the priority here, high, medium, etc., and the status, whether it's finished or not, with the deadlines. The nice thing about Roshare is it allows you to attach relevant files if you so wish. So once again, another way of organizing the whole project, and that would be very much showing evidence of how you are evaluating, checking, and referring to your project plan. Now, if you are interested in how professionals uh, manage projects, this I found an excellent website. It's the Master of Project Academy. It's a blog spot, and you can follow this link over here and have a look at that. It breaks down uh, exactly how professionals manage projects. It's complex, however, and I would warn that that's only for students who feel that they can cope with that level of detail. Now within DES, these are some important dates for our 2021 timeline. You know that you began the EPQ in the second week of September. One major date is that the report, the 5,000 word written report or the artifact and artifact report will be due in mid-October of 2021. Then the idea is that we will have a presentation in very early November, and the entire project, and that consists of the presentation, the report, and the production log, will be bound and put together and finished for the 25th of November 2021, this year. So those are major dates for you to think about. Now, in terms of smaller dates, that are some of the smaller dates that we need to consider, um, I'm going to uh, break down for you some of the most important things. Okay. So in your project plan, you need to refer to the initial ideas, something to do with the question formation, which occurs, the drilling down and the narrowing of the topic. You've just finished the candidate proposals, so some of you have done that in December, or you're finishing that now in January. You could put down some things about reading and note-taking and how you're going to break it down. Are you going to do different sections? You could also refer to, um, if you're doing some primary research here, you could refer to these three, data collection, data analysis, and data presentation. If you're not doing primary research and you're doing a literature review, then you might want to show exactly how you broke down the literature review. Did you do it by topic? Did you do it by year? Did you look at one side of the argument first and the other side later? Uh, the planning review is where we at now, so you would put that into your uh, planning. And then you'd have to show evidence of how you plan the structure. And the mid-project review is very important. That's the, the next production log entry is called the mid-project review. And that one is so important because this is where you will set the final title. At the moment, in the candidate proposal, you have a working title. You will review it once again now. Some of you will narrow down or change or, or nuance that title in the planning review section. And you have one final chance to change, adapt, modify the title at the mid-project review. And it's here that you will do your final title. Then you will go into planning and drafting the actual essay, the 5,000 words. If you're doing an artifact, you will be constructing the artifact then, and you will write the artifact report alongside the construction of the artifact, okay? The next uh, production log entry will be the project product review, and that will be finished after you get your first draft back, and that will be written 
in light of the changes suggested by your supervisor or me, the coordinator. You will show analysis of the feedback and then you will engage in redrafting your essay, your report. You will do a final check of the essay and I give you a huge checklist that I expect you to tick off and show that you've done all of these things. And as the essay is finished, you will immediately begin your presentation. Presentation is given to the general public. It's 20 minutes long with about 10 minutes of questions. And then you'll, you'll deliver your presentation. And let's hope that COVID is over by then so it won't have to be over the internet, that it will be in person. You will deliver your presentation. And then the final part of the project is the um, summary and review. Summary and review needs to be about a thousand words long because it's you looking back at the whole project and reflecting on your learning and evaluating your learning and saying how you might have done something different and what you're very pleased about. So very important, um, uh, that one. Okay, so there are a lot of things to do, as you can see. Um, this is a different way of seeing all of those stages that I've gone through. I thought I would put it in a different format just to show you that different people like information presented in different ways. I have to say that I probably prefer it in the linear form, but this is an alternative. And here's a further alternative. And I said to you that I would show you a flowchart. And this is a flowchart where you can see one thing following another. And so the final deadline there, the 25th of November of this year. So in terms of your planning, you need to think of that as your absolute final deadline. We cannot extend beyond that. Now, there are other forms of planning that you need to show as you go along in the EPQ. You can't simply rely on that one huge project plan. And they are things like mind maps. I'm hoping that when you did the initial ideas that you did maybe one, two or three or even four or five mind maps. Retain those as evidence of planning. They can go into the appendices of your production log. Your research diary or your journal or your notes, we can take screenshots of those. You can put those into your presentation or once again, we can put them into an appendices to give the examiner further evidence of your planning. Carefully record all of your references. Who wrote the articles? What pages does your information come from? What year were they published? Very important. I know we haven't done a referencing lesson yet, but we will in time. For the time being, just try to keep a careful record of where your information comes from. Now, if you're making a film, a shot list, a storyboard, absolutely key. If you're making an artifact and it's something like a statue or an artistic uh, exhibition or notes for, for a particular event or plans for a speech, there are so many different ways in which you can evidence your planning. Of course, if you're doing an essay, a report, please keep evidence of your planning. You should go from a light to a heavy plan. You could show evidence of drafts. Also, if you're constructing an artifact, uh, don't forget to have photos or sketches or whatever showing the various forms of planning that you engage to to get to the final product. Now, forgive me. Go back to my PowerPoint. And now, um, you need in your planning to take into account your the vast number of commitments that you have in your life. Part of the skill of the EPQ is to balance the EPQ project with all of your other commitments. And I'm going to begin with academic commitments. So at the moment, you need to think about end of year exams. You need to think about personal statements if you're going to the UK for UCAS and the whole UCAS process of filling in um, the UCAS form. You need to think about the fact that as part of UCAS, you need to maybe do a Coursera or a future loan course. You're going to need to show evidence of wider reading. Now you can use the EPQ 
to provide that and make and that allows you to synergize you're going to have to use unifrog to explore all of your universities now some of you are going to the united states who might be applying to europe might be applying to australia so you need to balance up those university commitments and you need to do some planning in general you need to think about all the coursework you have especially in subjects like english history media uh, geography drama in addition to that you may be doing an internship or some work experience so think very carefully about those commitments you may have some other tests sats the alnav the uk cat you may have other commitments uh, including the subject societies or different presentations and then of course when you return in year 13 your ucas will be due entirely in october and all forms the deadline for UCAS is in December. So you have many commitments ahead of you. And I'm, I'm not saying this to terrify you. I'm trying to show you that the planning in the EPQ may be of benefit in general across your life. Now, of course, in terms of your social and family commitments, these are extremely important. And in order to stay happy, I mean, well-being is a, is a, a huge part of education these days. And we need to think about this. You need to think about family visits. I am speaking to an expatriate audience here, so many of you will be seeing your families. So you need to think about family visits, holidays, birthdays, school trips, sporting events. I know during the time of COVID now we don't have so many, but that's going to change soon. Training, summer holidays, etc., etc. So you will get grades, but also you will benefit enormously by including these elements into your project plan. And by evidencing this, you are showing genuine life skills and real life learning, which is the essence of EPQ and project-based learning. So what do you do after you've listened to this? Well, it's time to go back to the production log, but only after you've done some really proper planning. So we're going to be looking at the planning review, as I said, and when you look at this first section, it will say my next steps in planning, researching and deadlines. Now you need to refer to your calendar or your Gantt chart here and talk about exactly how you broke the task down. I would make this quite a significant uh, production log. Some students choose to post a table into this part of the production log, which you're able to do. It doesn't have to be every single task until the end of the year. It could just be the next five stages of your research. By doing that, you're showing evidence of your project plan. I'm not going to read all of this out. I suggest that you freeze the screen, pause the screen and read it. I've included this as an excellent example of what a planning review should look like. This is a EPQ into affirmative action in Malaysia and South Africa. And it shows that this student has this huge title, but she shows a really clear sense of where she's going to next and how she will evaluate it and how she's going to balance this, as you see here, with all of her other commitments. She sets herself an ambitious title with a end date. And this is the key. I'm going to link this to the idea of smart targets. And this is something that you've had shoved down your throats many times. I don't want to go into it too much. But just to remind you, the idea of a smart target is that it is specific, just like our title of the EPQ. You can measure it. Did you get there or not? It's attainable. Don't make it too unrealistic. It's relevant. And it's time bound. This is the absolute key one. But to remind you, you can change your dates and times. Life happens. Don't be dishonest in your production log. Be transparent and speak about why changes happen. You actually get grades for showing that you are flexible and that you're able to make changes in that way. Now, finally, start planning now to remind you, AO1, you'll manage, and AO3, develop and realize will work closely they'll work in tandem here you show all the structures 
and here you show that you can change the structures when you need to. Always show evidence of problem solving. That's absolutely key. And decision making. So if you're changing anything here, explain it so that you can get the grades here. To remind you, the develop and realize is worth 40% of the entire grade. And much of that will be recorded in the production log and be evident in the production log in the presentation rather than your essay or your artifact. So now begin your planning. You could divide it into initial and secondary planning. Make sure that you contact your supervisor as ever. Discuss the project planning with them. Show them the plan. It gives you something really tangible to talk about. Remember that the supervisor is not there to help you with the content, but they can certainly help you with the planning process. All the time keeping evidence of your AO1 and AO3, and anything that is really useful, we will think about putting into the appendices of the project. Thank you so much for listening. Good luck with your planning. And remember the main message is flexibility. You choose the method that suits you. As long as it communicates clearly to your supervisor, your coordinator and examiner, and it gives evidence that you planned and thought and monitored. Thank you and goodbye.